All right, Kramer, KMMA tribe, friends, family, students, welcome back. I have another exciting podcast with you. And today I have with me uh, Mrs. Melissa Bretz. She's a, a licensed clinical social worker and she owns Lutz Counseling Services. She actually uh, is also uh, the proud and happy mother of an amazing Black Belt Leadership student, uh, Abby. Um, but uh, what I would like first, uh, Melissa, is for you just to talk a little bit more about kind of your business, what you do, what your calling and passion and purpose in life is. Sure. Hello there. I'm Melissa Bretz, as Stephen stated, and I do own Lutz Counseling Services. I'm a proud member of the team here. And what we do is we help teens, children, and adults through life's hurdles. And we any range from adjustment disorders, like if you just moved here or you're going through some anxieties or depression, those types of things, we're definitely here to help and give you those coping skills to navigate the world. Mm, that's good. That's awesome. Um, you. And you're right close to us too. I am. I'm just a little ways down, probably less than five minutes from you guys. Awesome. So if you are looking... Uh, for any help in that area, then obviously you should give Melissa a call. Uh, and by the way, um, as you've already alluded to, you are a member of our tribe here. So I wanted to start by maybe maybe in the just capacity as a mother who brought your daughter here, um, what have been some of your experiences uh, with Krav Maga Martial Arts? Of course. So Abigail is seven now. We have a seven-year-old. Um, so she's always been confident, but I feel that the Blackfoot leadership um, teachings help her become even more confident and also navigate for her. I mean, we've done sports in the past and it's always been this, oh, I don't like it. Oh, it's hard. And I'm going to, I'm going to stop doing it. And I don't think that that as a mother and also as a licensed professional in mental health, that's not the message here. We want kids to stay involved and not give up when things get hard because life is hard and we need to learn these skills and stick through it. And I feel that Grandmaster and of course the senseis really help the kids stick with it and provide them the support and encouragement they need to stay with the sport and get through things that are hard. Wow. You know, that, that that's such a great, great point because, you know, I think that perhaps, and I, and I would love your opinion because obviously you're a professional and thing, but I think that perhaps kids haven't been like in general, because certainly, like you said, it's different here, but in general, kids haven't been equipped necessarily with either the coping skills, but especially the, the, the skills to ne negotiate when things don't go their way, right? Like the, the, uh, the, you know, the challenges of life. And sometimes it, you, we can feel the same way about adults, right? Seeing, seeing how, some, how some people react to some things, but, uh, you know, maybe you could speak a little bit now, now more in your capacity as a mental health professional um, to how martial arts and especially our, our program here can help children with that. Okay, yes, exactly. So I think that children in general need sports or things of the nature like Krav Maga that help them navigate those problem solving skills because one of the things that Abigail learned very the, the first week she was here was that stress test and how it is a lot and you have people coming at you and it's, okay, what am I going to do? And maybe plan A didn't work, but there's a plan B, there's a plan C. I'm going to do something to make sure I pass the test. And she did, you know, that was hard for her, but also that sense of accomplishment of when she did succeed is something that she'll never forget. And she can take that onto life. And I feel that kids need that. Oftentimes there's so many kids that will get upset about the littlest thing and take it to heart and not know how to process and work through that. And Krav Maga assists with helping with those coping skills that we need. Yeah. Love that. That is so good. And you know, it's 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 funny that you brought up the stress test as an example of that because just an hour or two ago, uh, this morning I was counseling a young lady and helping her with her. Um, and this is an adult. I say young lady, but I mean an adult professional um, that I was helping with. Her, she was having a hard time focusing her time, energy, and attention in a productive direction. It was causing her to to spin out of control sometimes, right? Like, like 
to 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 have emotional lack of control based on the fact that there's just so much. And I used the stress. It was a student, of course. So so I used the stress drill as an analogy for this adult professional that, you know, think about the first time you did a stress drill. The first time you did the stress drill, it was overwhelming. And I explained, uh, I said, I asked the question, I said, why do you think it was overwhelming? And, and of course she was able to say, well, because I wasn't good at it yet. Right. And, and, and it's the same thing, right? It, rather we're managing our time, our energy, our attention, you know, what we choose to focus on, like even, even in our adult lives, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the stress drill is such a good analogy because you got to deal with what's important next and go to the next thing and what's important next. And you're, you're you know, it's, a, it's, it's problem solving and emotional control as much as, as self-defense training would, you know, uh, for all of us, absolutely. I think, right? Yes, absolutely. And anxiety is based off of the fear of the unknown. It's this, we're going to have this unexpected task or this circumstance, and we're not going to know how to get through it. And mm -hmm. I think with the stress test and the things that the kids and the adults at your program are learning is, yes, you can. You will be faced with a challenge, but you will get through it. Absolutely. Love, love that. Absolutely love that. The, the, um, Abby is seven. She started when she was six. Yes. Um, I had uh, last week I had Dr. Gold on and he was mentioning that he's that, you know, cause he's a college professor. He said, he said, you know, you, some of the stuff you got, you teach, I can't believe you're teaching to such young kids. Uh, and he of course was coming from the perspective of kind of the leadership lessons and principles from your perspective. Maybe you could speak a little more to some of the benefits that a young child can get because, because we know of course that like Abby's age is the most developmental like important right like that's the time to start right like um yes. could you speak a little more from because you're 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 an expert in the 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 arena of mental health and anxiety and depression and all these things that are like major problems in our world today um and you can speak to it both ways you can speak to it from the perspective of what we do you can speak to it from the perspective of what you do but really just towards the end, I know there's somebody going to be listening to this who has a depressed child or an anxious child or an isolated child. And maybe you could speak to, to some of that. So when you join Krav Maga and you're in the classes, it really is a family-like atmosphere. And the examples that are set from the top of, you know, Grandmaster all the way down to the littlest one is right there. And that is that sense of inclusion, which is so important because friend groups are hard to navigate. Mm. And that is what leads to a lot of developmental and mental issues within our children um, is that lack of belonging or that lack of feeling connection and accomplishment. So I do think that that definitely brings those components. And also too, engaging in martial arts brings out serotonin, which is the natural mm. hormone that helps combat depression and anxiety. Hmm. Wow. That's so great. So, so we can, uh, through, 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 through the power of the tribe, but also through the power of just this deliberate exercise, which is, you know, useful exercise and all that. But because I always say it's, it's, it, 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 you don't even realize you're exercising because you're doing the, the real self-defense and all of that. But, but what's neat is that you're saying, and oh, by the way, you can produce these positive chemicals, you know, anytime you want, just by making sure you make it to class. <laughs> right. And I was also thinking, as you were saying that too, like, so you have social media and you have all these kids who are attached to these screens and yeah, they're getting dopamine. They're getting that instant means of gratification, but it's not long lasting mm. as where Krav Maga engaging. And that is that long lasting dopamine that we want. And it's better than screen time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny you say that because the lesson of the week I'm giving this week is on the negative diet. And I have, I have them cutting out all these things. And the, and the first one is, is media, right? Like, all media, you know, just for, for some period of time, just to see how, how much better would you function if you weren't being distracted by social media or, or negative news on TV or right. Like, like we, 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 we go on diets away from other harmful things that are physically harmful. Why don't, why wouldn't you do that mental diet sometime? Right. Absolutely. Yes. You know, I like that. If, if you had um to give some advice to, um, somebody that it, 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 and uh and I thank you I love I love that you have um endorsed 
Krav martial arts so so heartedly as uh, wholeheartedly as one of the things that they could do. But um, but now some some other ideas just for a parent because I can't imagine. Or I guess I kind of can't imagine. I have raised three kids, but but they never had serious depression, right? Like I, I know some people that have gone through, you know, like all adolescents go through some some of it, right? Like you yeah. know, I, I remember having that talk with my youngest son. Like, look, son, there's the kind. I, I actually said there's the kind that everybody goes through. Right. Like like life isn't always perfect. And so, of course, everybody's going to experience some, you know, sadness or some, you know, or even the thing where, where once in a while, like I think we all went through, at least I know all of us did. You know, I've only had the experience of being a, a, a man, not a, you know, a boy and then a man, you know. So but I think it's probably the same for the ladies where you're like, maybe even like, wow, is this really all there is? And that kind of stuff. Right. Um, and I told him, I said, that can be normal. But I told him, I actually was talking more about your profession now. I said, but 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 son, if you ever get to a point where you're having these thoughts or this thoughts or this, then you know, there are also professionals we know that you can see too, right? Like, um yes. what kind of advice would you give to parents on in negotiating that? Because I know that 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 it can be difficult to figure out like, is this just a phase the kid's going through, or is this something that does require some more attention? Well, I always think that. It could be a phase or it could be something that requires more attention. So it is important to have a mental health professional evaluate mm -hmm. where the child is or the teen is in that process, just to make sure all of those bases are covered in that sense. And mm -hmm. I think having someone to navigate, like, because yes, you have your friends, but the thing about having friends is you're not sure if they're going to tell or what they think of it, or even your parents, you know, there's some things that you just may not want to share with them that you can share with a third party and mm. knowing that it's confidential. Of course, there's limitations to that, but majority of what you say in a counseling session is kept confidential. And it's a third party with not an investment in the situation that's going on that can give you that outside perspective and navigate that with you mm -hmm. and, and give you those coping skills and help you if you're going through that hard time in life. Right. So 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 if it's if it's questionable that you should just come see you and 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 you'd be able to tell them hey. Is there a question? Um is there a question, are there any kinds of questions though to help the parent decide if it's to that point, right? Like, or if it's, because, and, and to be honest, I'm saying it from the perspective of, I know that a lot of parents and especially us men, again, it could go the other way where it's like, ah, it's nothing. He'll get, he'll get right. Like, like that. So mm -hmm. what would be some questions just to, to help the, you know, the person ask their kid the right questions to see if they want to, to go to that next level? Well, I also, there's questions, but I also think it comes in about of the symptoms as far as do you mm -hmm. notice an uh, increase in exclusion and isolating in room, or do you notice a change mm -hmm. in sleep, appetite, excessively crying? There's other symptoms like that. And okay. I think as far as questions to maybe evaluate, parents could ask, you know, how are you doing? How's your friend group? Who do you have as support? Okay. What do you see that brings you joy? What's going on for you in your life? That's great. That's great, great stuff. And obviously, as I as you're answering, I'm 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 realizing that the mistake in my question is it obviously depends a lot where the child is age-wise as well, too, right? Like it's obviously probably different if you're speaking to a you know young adult, basically, than if you're speaking to a six or seven year old, right? Like mm -hmm. so um you know, it, it we you have brought up in every part of it the importance of that friend group and stuff, though, and I think that that is so. Like I, I heard something the other day, and you can you can speak to if this is even true or not, because I just heard it from a. I was listening to a, a one of my leadership gurus that I listened to, but he's he brought up that, um, the uh, Surgeon General had had supposedly brought up loneliness as one of the worst, like, like, I think he actually used the language, the cigarette smoking of our generation, like, that it was like that much of a, of an epidemic. Um, and, and, and I remember thinking to myself right away, wow, another reason why what we do is so important, right? I thought I had two thoughts. That was one is that I'm glad we have such a great tribe here. And the other thought was, you know, that kind of stuff has probably certainly been exasperated by what happened with the 
of the pandemic and all that, right? Like the. Yes, absolutely. COVID brought about a lot of isolating times for us and we weren't able to have those engagement with our friends. And we, yes, we had social media like we talked about, but as you said earlier too, that's not always the best and it's a void. It's a temporary shot of dopamine to fill that loneliness, but it's not, it's not the same as in person that would bring that connection. Hmm. Yeah, and and um, and unfortunately, I think another thing that happens to young people sometimes through social media is, you know, you're looking people. Most people aren't, you know. Well, actually, you see both extremes, right? They're either just, you know, unloading on social media, or the opposite. The one that I'm talking about can be really detrimental. Is they only show a perfect life, and then, and so you so you have this person that is comparing their backstage reality to somebody else's front stage persona. And thinking that somehow they're not making the cut, right? You know, right. And I think martial arts again helps with that too because it teaches this. There's not this comparison against what is this person doing over here. There's PRs. There's personal goals and personal records that you're making to better yourself, and that is a great thing to have to help you not look at things and compare yourself to others because we're all on a different journey and we're all working on different things and have different challenges and different strengths. Wow. I love that so much. Love that so much. In fact, that's too good. That's going to have to be the closing. Uh, <laughs> but so let me ask you this, Melissa. Um, thank you for, for, for this great podcast. If people did want to find out more about your business, uh, get more information from you, um, where would they go? They could call our phone number. It's 813-586-0956. They can also go to our website, which is www.ludescounseling.com, and they would have the information they need. We do take insurances. We do offer self-pay. There's all sorts of different ways, but we do offer insurance. So that is usually helpful for a lot of our clients. Outstanding. And I'll go ahead and put that website in the show notes as well. Um, Anything else that you'd like to add before we call it a wrap? I can't think of anything. I think we covered everything. Oh, I got one fun thing. I got a fun one. I got a fun one because you're coming to my summer camp. I am. I am very excited about this. I think that is so awesome. You know, I remember the first year that I because we do that leadership camp that's teaching martial arts and it's teaching leadership and all that other stuff. I remember the first time I thought, what if I made it available to adults too? And, and it's so cool. There's like professionals like yourself that that love to take advantage of it. I love that. Yes. And my daughter is thrilled that I'll be in the classes with her. And she's really looking forward to that connection between her and myself. Love it. And I'm looking forward to being able to to help you accomplish all your goals at the camp. I did think of one more thing too, as just sure. as because we talked about the kids and their mental health. I think it's important for the adults too, because I will say there's not only the connection with the students, but I also feel it with the parents. Everyone is so welcoming and I've made connections and supports with the actual parents of the students at your dojo. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much for that. And uh, man, I love it. I love to hear it. Well, thank you so much, Melissa. Uh, Thank you for making time out of your busy day. And uh, I look forward to seeing you back here real soon. Well, thank you. And you have a wonderful day as well. Ma'am. All right.